What's up? What's up? What's up? What's going on? A little bit, little bit, little bit uh, delay cranking up here. We had a little technical difficulty. Technical difficulty. But anyway, we're all sorted out now, so we're gonna get this thing cranked up. Rolling. Yeah. So yeah. we're rolling. We're rolling. Hey, if, if any of you guys cannot see, cannot uh, cannot see the picture, hear us, or any of the above. Uh, let me know. Let me know so that we can go ahead and fix that up for you. And um, we want to make sure that uh, we uh, we fix that. Cool. All right. Let's start. All right, so hey, what's up, guys? Joe Munoz here. You know who this is at. Juan Dominguez from OneStepPrep.com. Uh, Coming to you live. This is kind of a new thing, right? You may, uh, this is the first time we're doing this. It's a One Step Prep TV, you know, show that we're doing. Uh, basically, we're looking at doing this probably about twice a month. All right, it may end up being more, okay? Depending on what kind of outcome we get out of this. We might be doing this every week. Who knows? So uh, the whole thing with this is the following. We want to make sure that we're answering your questions. Yesterday, we were in this office. We spent here all day long going through the member list and calling all of them. So if you're a member already and we called you, uh, you know why we called you now, okay? <laughs> so yeah. we're just we're just kind of touching touch base, make sure you guys know that um, we're not just in a video screen, we're also here for you. So, you know, we wanna work with you and stuff like that. So, so hey, look, today's show, okay, today's show is about three things. You can see it on the TV behind us, right? Key factors to type rating success, three things to this. And this is a question that we get a lot, Okay, it comes in via email, comes in on, the, on, on phones, comes in when guys come into our office for training, and they're like, hey, I have a type rating coming up. And by the way, it doesn't matter if you're doing this at a 142 training center, okay, at a 121 airline, maybe you're doing 121 supplemental, right? It doesn't matter where you're training. I don't care what anybody says. A type rating is a type rating. Okay, a type rating is a type rating. It's going to apply for everybody, yeah. So, yeah. And then here's the thing, too, right? Because sometimes it's like, oh, no, I'm flying in South America. I'm flying in parts of Africa. I'm flying in the Middle East. It's all mine. Listen, an airplane, an airplane's not going to change, right? The systems aren't going to change. So, uh, so hey, look, let, let's talk. Let's talk about uh, what are these three factors uh, to type rating success. And by the way, if you have questions while we're going, we're going to do our best to kind of stick stick to what we're doing here, and we'll get to the uh, questions afterwards. Uh, but put them in the comments. All right, we're on Facebook Live right now. We're on YouTube Live. Put it in the comments so that we can uh, go ahead and, and, and get those things, those questions uh, answered for you. And there it is. So, all right, so check this out, right? Three things right here. The first thing is don't assume, and, and let me tell you what I mean by this, okay? Don't assume. All too often, okay, pilots think you just got hired at a carrier, right? Or maybe you're going to a training center. And everybody thinks that they're going to spoon feed you systems. Okay, you're going to come into training. The instructor is going to guide you. They're going to spoon feed you systems, and you're basically going to spend what we, what we would consider a good course, 40-hour course, talking through systems. Guess what? It's not going to happen. Okay, not it's happen. not. It's not. Listen, and and, <laughs> and 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 I mean this in the most sincere way. Okay, the way training as an industry right now is going. Okay, and I'm just not talking about just here in the U.S. Okay. I'm talking about everywhere in all parts of the world. And Juan and I, we have taught everyone all over the world. Okay. Here's what you're going to find when you show up to training. More computer-based training. That's it. More self-study. Okay. You, I mean, uh, in a lot of cases, you won't even have an instructor for the full five days. Usually, you'll do a home study CBT, okay, computer-based training. You don't know what that means. Right? You'll do that. You'll show up. And usually now, you might have an instructor for a day to go through systems with you. Hopefully, they can answer your questions. Maybe they can't. Okay. So that's the nature of it, right? So with that in mind, what I'm saying is this. Do not assume that you're going to show up to training and they're going to show you everything. Don't assume that you shouldn't be doing prep work beforehand. Right. Okay. So, I mean, how many times, Juan, well, let's talk about this for a second, right? Um, somebody shows up for a home study course, okay, or not a home study, a full initial course. They come for a full initial course, right? And this, we're talking about 142 training center here. They come for a full initial course thinking that the instructor is going to take them through everything without them having any prior knowledge about anything. 
Okay, how often do we see this? Never. Okay, here's the thing. You, you need to understand that when you come, you gotta be prepped, okay? You gotta be prepped up. And so here's the deal with this. All I'm saying is un, un, unless, uh, you know, you're doing like a home study course, unless you're doing a home study course, then you, you have the material you're studying at home. But when you're coming to type rated training, you know, to do a full initial with an instructor, be sure that you prep yourself prior, okay? So now, with that in mind, uh, know what you're studying for. Notice here, point number two, okay, we put know what you're studying for. Three parts to an oil. What are the three parts to an oil? Memory items. Limitations. Lights and switches. That's it. Okay. That's all today. That's the oil right there. Look, I don't, I don't care what airline you're at, right, what training center you're at. Memory items, limitations, lights and switches. Now, a lot of you guys, right, you've gone through the video library and you're like, hey, how come I only see lights and switches and I don't see memory items and limitations? Okay. Here's the answer to that. Okay, depending on, you wanna use your company specific documentation for that. Some aircraft have auxiliary tanks. Okay, I'll be, for example, 737, right? Where's the 73 drivers out there? Hey, look, some of them have auxiliary tanks, some of them don't. So your, your uh, fuel, okay, for example, your fuel numbers and the limitations are gonna be different, okay? Some of you guys uh, maybe have winglets. Some carriers don't have winglets, okay? So what that means is now your, your max demonstrated crosswind number is going to be different. You might be flying the classic, you might be flying the engine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we don't put that in there because we want you to use your own company specific stuff. Yeah. But look, memory items, limitations, right? And lights and switches, mm -hmm. fault lights. Mm -hmm. And of course, auto logic, mm -hmm. okay? Airbus guys out there, auto logic, flight control logs, mm -hmm. okay? So now look, when I say know what you're studying for, all right, let me click through this really quick. Okay, there, here, here's a training planner. Take a look at this real quick for a second. Okay, uh, what you need to do, what you guys need to do, okay, is when you get your, your schedules, okay, just like what you see behind me, I'm gonna get out of the way so you can see this, you need to put day one, okay, day one on the far left side, all right, and then draw a line, and you're gonna have day X, okay, whatever it is, Usually, most training programs are about 21 days if you're doing it at a 142 school. You're looking at three weeks, okay? Three weeks. If you're doing it at an airline, it ranges anywhere between six weeks. It could go up to eight weeks. Okay, just kind of company specific there. Okay, so look, here's the deal, right? And by the way, this training plan that you're looking at behind me, you can download, go to the store, okay, onestepprep.com, right, forward slash store. You can download this thing for free, which what I would do is I would download it, just use it as a template for you to go ahead and develop your own your own uh, footprint, training footprint later on, or your timeline better is what uh, better said. Right, okay, so, so watch this, right? You got day one, okay, on the far left side, and then you got day X over here. Now, you gotta put in the checking events. When's the oil coming? Okay, some training footprints have what we call phase validations where they have gates or something to that effect, right? So when are these uh, phase validations, these dates, these checking events so that you know when to study? Well, the first one, okay, is gonna be your oil. Okay, right there, yeah? And then the last one later on is gonna be your check ride. Okay, so we'll put the check ride over here. You like, you like my handwriting, right? <laughs> so you get your check ride. Now, usually after the check ride, you're gonna have a lock, okay? Jeopardy items, pink slippable, okay? Got a word, pink slippable. Oral, check ride. These are the items, right, where you're like, hey man, if I don't pass this, you're gonna pink slip, right? Okay, so watch this, okay? So now, notice on this, on this training plan over here on the other side, I've got these two circles up like this, okay? This is, this is to represent a pie chart, okay, that you are later on, you're gonna fill this in on your own. Right, and what you need to do is this. For the oral, I know I need to study three things. What are the three things that we talked about already that we need to study for an oral? Right, memory items, what else? Limitations, and license switches. Limitations, and license switches. Okay, license switches. Right, license switches includes the auto logic. Okay, by the way, I think I said this already. If you're an if you're an Airbus guy, okay, you're talking about flight flight control laws, which is kind of specific to the bus, right? So if you're if you're if you're a bus driver, if you're a bus driver guy, okay, you got you got these uh, uh, flight control laws, okay, for all the bus guys out there, the flight control laws, okay, you got to know that stuff as well. All right, so so out of these three things, what do I study first? What do I study second? What do I study third? Okay, what 
how, how do I prioritize my time? What, what, what would you say the most important thing is? What would you say the most important thing is, Juan, to, to study first? Probably, I actually have them in order. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. Memory items and limitations. Memory, yeah. memory items is yeah. going to take some time, you know, so don't wait until the last minute to study all these memory items and limitations because it takes time. Yeah. Uh -huh. let, let, me, let me tell you why the memory items and limitations are so important, okay? This is like 60%. Listen, if you get, if you answer this, okay, memory items and limitations, you need to knock these things out. That, that's at least 60% of the order, pretty much. 60%. Yeah, no, 60%. Okay. And if you don't pass the memory items and limitation, then you don't go to the systems. So, and that's the way they're going to start. They're going to start asking you memory items, and if you pass that, then they're going to go into limitations. And if you pass that, then they're going to go into systems, yeah. license search. Look, this is this this is a tone set. Right. That's a you know call it whatever you want. That's that's a that's a tone set. Okay. <laughs> so what I'm saying is this, right? If I ask you, hey, what's the uh, service ceiling for the NG by level four one zero, right? What's the uh, uh, max altitude for flap extension? 20,000. Minimum altitude for speed rate, you know, they haven't been deployed, 1,000 feet. Man, if you rattle these things off, I mean, what do you think your examiner's thinking, man? He's like, wow, this, this guy, he, he, he studied. He paid this thing justice, right? So now this part over here, okay, your lights and switches, your auto logic, your flight control laws, okay, you're still getting checked on this, but it's almost more of like a discussion now, okay, because uh, you've set a good tone, you know, so you're still getting checked on it, by all means, and you need to be able to hold healthy conversations about what these lights and switches are doing, fault lights, you know, auto logic, stuff like that. But this is the tone setter. So look, going back to this deal, right, with the training planner, if you do not know memory items and limitations, you should not be studying switches. Right. Okay? It makes but, sense. I, I mean, there's, <laughs> there's, there's nothing else to say about that. If you don't know memory items and limitations, you, you, should, you shouldn't be studying uh, fault lights. Okay? So... What is my focus on day one? Right? Memory items, limitations. And if I were to have this pie chart up here, I would be 100% memory items and limitations. That's where you need to be on day one, okay? That's how it is. Now, as you start moving through the timeline, okay, day two comes, day three comes, right. what do you think we're gonna start moving, introducing now, okay? all this other stuff down here, lights and switches, auto logic, stuff like that. Okay, so crucial that we get that point, and now we're gonna start tapering off that, we're gonna move into the auto logic later on, right? So, where's my, my paper, paper stuff? And when you study memory items and limitations, like Bill was saying, you know, study the first day, don't try to, you know, memorize the whole memory items the first and second day. Just get like two memory items, two or three, memorize it, and maybe two pages of limitation. Yeah. Then the second day, review those three memory items and then add maybe one more or two more depending how you know you good you know how good you are memorizing you stuff yeah. so you know don't wait to last minute to memorize all this stuff so just do it step by step yeah. that's the best way to go yeah. you know so yeah. when the time comes you already know all your memory items and limitations yeah you know, in a good tape yeah know. yeah yeah so so, all right, so let's put this back up here, right? Let's say now, man, memory items, limitations are flowing. I know these things well. I want to start introducing the flight, the, uh, the auto logic and the amber lights and stuff like that, right? So now I kind of start tapering off, okay? And maybe I'll, I, I even venture to say something like this. Maybe I'll start initially at about 50-50, okay? I'll start introducing the uh, lights and switches and the auto logic and stuff like that. Eventually, your memory items and limitations should come to a point where you feel pretty comfortable with them, and you're basically going to go 75, right? right 75. Now you're going to concentrate more in systems, lights and switches. Okay. Yeah. And now you're doing something like that. Okay, 75, 25. And 75, I guess it should be this way, right? 75, 25 over here. So now, I'm like, hey man, I got these memory items and limitations. I'm going through the lights and switches, the auto logic, the flight control laws, et cetera. And let me, let me show you where you're, where you're going to run into problems. You ready for this? Let me show you where you're going to run into problems. Over here, okay, notice you got the oral date. Okay, now listen to this. This is a problem for everybody. In fact, we had somebody in the office yesterday flying. He just got hired at the 121 carrier and he's running into this problem. Okay, all this time you're studying for an oral. Okay, 21 day course. And now, right when your oral's coming up, they start introducing paper trainer, systems integration training. Right. Flows. Checklist, right. All right, so here you are with, with this deal. Normals, abnormals, all this stuff. Okay, and the flows are gonna come in right here, right? right? So now, you're like, what, what do I study for? 
right? Should I be studying flows? Which, by the way, you're going to learn how to look at the mass in this part. Okay, should I be studying flows? How to look at the mass? Should I be doing memory items, limitations, all? Should I be studying for the oral? What do I study for? Okay, so look, here's what you need to do with this. Some of you guys won't have this problem because the training program is laid out in a way where you're not going to run into this. But for, the, for most of you guys, right, you're going to run into this problem. Okay, so watch this. So here's what you need to do. Okay, as your as your 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 um, oral is coming up and your flows are coming up, stay focused on the oral, not so much the flows. Okay, I'm not saying don't study them, study them. But if I could look at this pie chart, okay, what I would do is basically a couple days, okay, a few days out from the oral, which is also a few days from your flows. I might do 50-50, okay, 50%. And 50% flows and oral prep. This is a couple days out. Okay, I'm talking about like, for example, today's Saturday. If my oral was on Wednesday, okay, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, okay, I would be looking 50-50 at, at flows and at the uh, oral. Okay. Now come Tuesday. In fact, Monday night. Come Monday night, Tuesday, all of Tuesday, I'd be looking 100% at oral. I would not be looking at flows anymore. Right. Okay, the day before, and, and probably even uh, just shy of 48 hours before, okay, maybe more like 30 hours or something, something like that before. I'm looking only at my oral stuff. Okay, why? Okay, if you, with no passing oral, there is no sin. No sin, man. Okay? You want to get that out of the way. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So look, if you don't pass this oral, you're not, you're not going into the sin, man. You're not going into the sin. So there's no, there's no uh, reason to even know your flows. If I'm not going into the sin list. You see what I'm saying? And that's what the entire of it. That's why, you know, we repeat these so, you know, all the times, you know, don't wait until the last minute, like maybe a couple of days or your oral. Oh, now you start starting limitation of memory items. I don't know. You know, and that's and it happens all the time. You know, every time we teach, you know, we ask the guys, you know, you know how's the oral? How's the limitation? How's the limitation of memory items do? Oh, well, you know, I know the memory items may be 40%. What do you mean 40%? Your oral is tomorrow. Now they're going to have to start rushing, yeah. you know, trying to memorize this overnight, and it's not going to happen. Yeah. That's why we always say, you know, the first day of grammar school, when you start, always yeah. it start with memory items and limitation. Yeah. Like that, you can do it little by little. Just get two memory items, three memory items. That's it. Yeah. Then the following day, review those three, add two more. Yeah. The same thing with the limitation. Get one or two pages. Memorize it good, remember, and then the following day, review those two pages and then add one more page. Yeah. That one, the oral cup, you already know all this stuff, you know. Yeah. That's in, in a good way. And here's the thing, too, there's a lot of systems to know, right? Okay, when we're talking about system stuff and you're, you're studying for your oral and stuff, you're going to want to study. Let's say today, generally I try to hit three systems a day. Okay, when we're, when we're doing ground schools and stuff like that, for example, I'll do electrics, hydraulics, and pneumatic in a day. Okay. And then the next day I might move into fire protection, flight controls. Okay, anti alias or fuel, something right. like that. Okay. Which by the way, okay, the way you're learning system is important as well. Right. Right? And I'm gonna give you an example of this. Okay. If you haven't done hydraulics, <laughs> what, what are you not gonna know? You you cannot do right. which system? Flight control. Flight control. Right. If you have not done hydraulics, you should not be doing flight controls, right. man. You shouldn't be doing it. So you All have right. to be careful the way you study. Yeah. yeah, so you know there's there's a preferred means, basically, of intaking information. So, all right, cool. And it goes the same with systems, huh? The day, like Joe was saying, if the first day you do, for example, oxygen, electrical, and pneumatic, you know, that day and night when you get, you know, you, when you get to the hotel, they study license switches for oxygen, electrical, and pneumatics. Yeah. Just review that. Then, couple of memory items, and then two pages of limitation. Yeah. And then it goes like that, you know, okay. every day. Yeah, see, see, you, see, see, so what you're doing is you're, you're, you're trying to get yourself to a level of, of knowing, okay, which takes me to my third point, we're going to move that in a minute, but you got to get yourself on a level of, at the very least, conscious competence, okay, let, let me, so let me explain to you what that means, okay, now sometimes I draw this, right, sometimes I draw this, and people think I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm insulting because I say unconsciously and confidently you didn't see what I'm talking about in a minute, but that's not that's actually not what it is. I'm just I just need you to understand where you need to be from a standpoint of understanding, right? 
Okay, maybe you've seen this ladder before. So you come in, and you are basically unconsciously, I'm just gonna put UI, okay, for short. So you're unconsciously incompetent. You're, you're unconsciously in, incompetent, okay? Not everybody's like this when you're learning something new, okay? You're brand new to, to you know, cycling, to fishing, to whatever. You don't know what you don't know. That's what that means, okay? You don't know what you don't know, okay? Which is, which is a dangerous position to be in. Okay, so now you get to conscious competence, okay? Or conscious incompetence, I should put. Conscious incompetence. You know what that means. You know what you don't know, all right? So you come in day one, you're like, what am I supposed to know for this, right? And then you're like, the instructor hopefully okay, tells you, well, look, this is what you need to study. Memorandum limitations like your switches, your limitations are gonna be found in, in FCOM volume one, okay? Or the, or, uh, you know, for, the, for, for those of you that are at uh, Airbus, you know, it'll be in, in a comp, right? So they tell you what, what information you need to know and where you can find it. Hopefully that's what they're gonna do, okay? Right? If not, that's why we're here. Yeah. yeah, so, <laughs> exactly, so so you got this, this level of unconscious incompetence, where you're like, okay, I, I don't know what I don't know, then you got this level of conscious incompetence, so at least now you know what you don't know, so you know where you can allocate time to study, okay, then you're going to get to a level of conscious competence, and then unconscious competence, okay, so what this means is this, here at conscious competence, you can perform the tasks that need to be performed and answer the questions that need to be answered, assuming you're 100% focused. That's what that means, right? So if we're doing flows, for example, okay, you're in 7.3, all right, Jen's on, you go up to your anti-ice, come down to the hydraulics, you're doing the pneumatics, and you're doing these flows, and if I can hold a conversation with you about what you ate for dinner last night while you're doing flows, that would be unconsciously competent because now you're able to do the tasks without thinking about it, right? Putting 100% of your brain power towards it. However, if you're here, right, conscious competence, what this means is that you can do them, but I can't interrupt you. It's like you're doing your flow, and then the second I say, hey, uh, you know, did you see that football score? You're like, no, no, don't, don't talk to me about that because I'm doing my flow. You see, does that make sense? It's like you, you can't have any outside distractions. So look, what, what this level, Okay, by the way, the only way, the only way, the only way to climb this ladder is repetition, okay? Experience, repetition, go through things right. over and over. That's the only way to do it, all right? There's no, until, until we have a helmet that we can just like implant knowledge, right? This is the only way to do it. So the whole thing is you want to get to here, to a level at least of conscious competence where you can perform the tasks needed, okay? Even if you're putting 100% of your brain focus on this, and then later on, you're going to get to that to that unconscious level. So uh, um, that goes back to invest. It's point three, as I mentioned earlier, investing in yourself to know. Okay, investing in yourself to know. You you, you, you got to know what you're studying for. And here's the difference between knowing versus just learning something. Okay, if if you go from A to B, okay, driving, flying, whatever, right? You go from A to B and then you go from B back to A, which one takes shorter, okay, shorter time, right? It's like watching a movie, it's like going somewhere. If let's say you're here, you're going here, right? If you go from here to here, and the next day, okay, you go back that way, which one takes shorter time, same distance? It's probably this one. <laughs> Why? It makes sense, right? Because <laughs> you already traveled the route. Right. You've already seen it. You know what I'm saying? You know, if you watch a movie two on the first time that you watch the movie, okay, there's probably th there's probably some scenes you're gonna miss, right? But if you watch it second, third, fourth, fifth time, th there's gonna be other things that are, that you're like, oh wow, I, I didn't realize that before. Why? Because you're so focused on one thing, you know, in one scene that maybe you like, and you didn't actually see the rest of it that was pointed out. So that's the deal with that. So how many times should you, should they watch the videos, Juan? At least. At least those videos are four times. Four times. At least four, four times. Yeah. Maybe three, 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 four. You know. And remember, we have all these, you know, pre orals. We have system review. We have flows. So it is excellent for you guys to be reviewing this class. And the good thing is you can, you know, get this video before you start your train. Yeah. You know. Now we we're not, we're not telling them, you know, to you know watch the whole thing before because you don't know, you know, how you're gonna study. Yeah. But uh, you know. Yeah. Some of you guys already just doing recurrence, you know, training. Maybe yeah. already 
flown the airplane, you know, you flew this type of airplane. So it's that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah so the, and, and so you know, here's another thing. Okay. How, how, how are you studying? What type of material are you using? Okay. This is like, you know, do I need a Phillips head screwdriver or do I need a flathead? You know what I mean? Like, what kind of material? What kind of? What kind of? And look, there's a lot of good stuff out there. Right? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of good stuff out there. There's a lot of uh, good free stuff out there, like this video right here, right? That we're doing, that we're shooting right now. Well, my point is, do, okay, and, and buy something or invest time and energy in something that's really gonna help you uh, to comprehend and to understand. Okay, so there are apps, there's study guides, there's uh, cram course books, free videos on YouTube, okay? Um, of course, the number one, one step crap, we're gonna talk about that, right? So, but my point is that now that I've set aside the time, I've allocated the time, okay, aside, and I've decided, okay, initially I'm gonna study 100% of my limitation, then I'm gonna go 50-50 with flow, with, with uh, flight control laws, right, with auto logic, lights and so they have most guys. Okay, yeah. So once you've, you know, set aside this timeline of where am I gonna allocate time, now I have the time, what resources what resources am I going to use in this time to maximize the time? You see what I'm saying? Right. And so this is where um, the video training is going to help you in, incredibly, right? If you if, if you have a, a flat tire and you need to change a tire, you need to change your battery on your car. I mean, what's the first thing you're going to do? You're, you're, you're probably going to go to YouTube and look up how to change a tire, right? How to change a tire on whatever model car. Before you consult your manual on your car, you're probably gonna go to the video. Why? Because you absorb quick. It's the fast way of transferring knowledge. You see it demonstrated live. That, I mean, that's just the, 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 the way it is, the way we learn, you know what I'm saying? So, so, uh, so that's the deal with that, right? That's the reality of that. So don't assume, okay, just to recap this, okay? Do not assume that you are gonna show up to training and they're gonna explain everything to you. You know, a lot of times that's what happened. A lot of, you know, instructors or companies, they don't explain, you know, what you should be studying for, you know. So that's the idea behind, you know, all these videos and training that we do, you know, to help you guys to go through the whole pipe. Yeah. You know, so. You wanna, you wanna prep yeah. yourself beforehand. I think the first thing they should be studying is at least something, even the first day from home, memory items and limitations. That's something that if you already have that, you can start with that, you know. Take yeah. advantage of your time. Don't wait until you start. Because yeah. once you start, this will not stop. Yeah. It's just a continued training. Yeah. yeah. And and listen and so listen to this, right? If you have your hands on it, because you may right. not, you might not have your hands on that. Right. Right. You, know, thing, you yeah. might you might not have memorandum limitations until you show up to day one, and that's when they distribute it to you, right? So look, if you don't have the memorandum limitations, no problem. Okay. Just study the systems up until the point when you get the memorandum limitations. Right. Study systems until you get to learn to, to you get the material distributed. Once you get the material, right now you can you know kind of cut the systems for temporarily. You're definitely gonna get back into them, but just cut them temporarily so you can get those memorandum limitations. You know what I'm saying? So um, so, so that would be a, a good way to think about that. Now look, if you are work, you're at a carrier. You just got hired by a new carrier. I'm at ABC Airways, and now I'm going to XYZ. You should leave your previous company if you can afford to do this with at least a week to two weeks in between leaving one company and starting the other, all right? Because you need that time in between to prepare for the next aircraft site that you're gonna be flying, all right? So uh, what we see a lot is, you know, we, we got a guy come in and he's like, hey, you know, I'm flying at, at ABC Air and I just got hired at XYZ and, you know, I end on the, on the, on the 13th of April and I start on the 16th at my new job. And I'm like, man, you don't have no time, man. You haven't been able to study anything, you know? So <clears throat> if you could afford to have some time in between, definitely I would do that. Now look, if you, if, here's another thing, right? If you, watch, if you watch us enough, you know that we're not really a big believer in uh, whatever you know about your last airplane, dump it, okay, and learn the new airplane. Now, there's a lot of instructors, a lot of pilots out there that you know, rightfully so, I get it. They think that, you know, whatever whatever my last aircraft was, I'm gonna dump it, because now, you know, a Boeing is not an Airbus, an Airbus isn't a Boeing, a CRJ isn't an ERJ. And, and look, to some extent, that's true, but in a lot of ways, it's not. So what, what we advocate is adapt knowledge. 
Don't forget, okay, adapt knowledge. I'm gonna give you an example of this. How many hydraulic systems on the 737? Right? We've got three, right? Okay, how many hydraulic systems on an Airbus? Three, the same. Same, you know, same thing, three, right? How much, what's the operating PSI on a 737? 3,000 PSI. Okay, what's the operating PSI on an Airbus? 3,000 3, PSI. PSI. Okay. It might change a little bit, you know, in terminology, but I it's mean, all the same pretty much. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? We, we have a PT, you know, what does PTU stand for? Power transfer unit. Okay, we got, we got one on the Airbus. You got one, we got one going as well. You see what I mean? Generator, electrical system, 90 kVA. What's the, what's the K, on an NG, how much kVA do we have? 90 kVA. You see what I mean? So, uh, there's, there's a, there's means for you to adapt knowledge. And in a lot, in some cases, Okay, you can, but I wouldn't jump it, if that makes sense, right? Cool, so hey, look, are there any questions, right? Call, if you have, 1888, by the way, I don't think we wrote this up here. Yeah, so this is the phone number. 778-1441, 1888-778-1441. Look, if you have a question and you wanna to talk to us right now, right now, man, right now, okay, we, yeah. got, our, we got our, uh, the phone's right here, man, so call us up. Or, or for those on uh, on um, Facebook, write it in the comments. For those on YouTube, write it in the comments. All right. And uh, we're gonna answer it. So let me see, who's, who, who's, who do we got in here? Scott Gilbert. Scott, man, what's going on, Scott? Mr. Scott. Captain Gilbert, what's up, man? Hey, thanks for, for uh, tuning in and watching us. Awesome, awesome to, uh, Scott's one of our members, so um, he can he can kind of talk to you about what the uh, what our courses look like and stuff like that. So what else, who do we have on YouTube? Let's see. What else you got, Juan? What do you think? Let's see what we got. You know, a um, an examiner is going to know if you're going to pass like within the first 15, 20 minutes. <clears throat> right. Like within the first like like within the first fifteen minutes, like they know. You know. So like, let me show you. Uh, let's 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 ask them that question about the isolation valve. When you put the APV valve. Oh, for the APV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. The problem is, uh, you know, the majority of the airlines, I would say maybe ninety percent, eighty percent, you know. They, they're going into this CBT, you know, computer-based training. Uh, so a lot of time, you know, you study yourself. It's just you and the computer. So a lot of time, if you don't understand a system, you know, how are you going to know? Who are you going to ask? So you have to go back again, you know, try to understand it. Or you might have an instructor walking around, you know, but it's not the same. So that's why, you know, we come into place and we, we've been trying to, you know, help you, you know, help everybody now. Mm -hmm. We're just going in detail, you know, these systems, uh, knowledge, you know, how to study, yeah. because we've seen a lot of problems, you know, with, uh, with pilots trying to study, you know, trying to study for initial returns. So that, that's what, you know, the idea behind all these more videos that we're doing. More, right more instructor-led more instructor -led training. training. And, and you'd be surprised, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of people, you know, we have pilots, you know, for, you know, these, they might have 15, 20,000 hours and they come to a uh, recurrence or they give us a call, you know, hey, you know, I just want to do some, you know, a couple of days system review. Mm -hmm. And they'd be surprised, you know, they could, yeah, they go, whoa, my God, I didn't know this. Well, <laughs> guess what? It's just because you just did CBT training. Yeah. You know, you don't have one-on-one -on -one training on system. Yeah. And we're going to give you, you know, a couple of examples here. Joe and I, so you can, you know, so you can see how it goes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so, you know, here's the thing, like instructor-led training, I think it's just so important. Unfortunately, you know, um, like we said earlier, we're, we're kind of more in a, in a CBT type thing, we're more right. in a self-study type deal. Right. You know, uh, uh, which, listen, for some it works, you know, for some it works, and for others it, it, it doesn't work as well. But the, but you, you want to know what my recurrent classes are? When we teach, when we have guys come in here, Okay, right. to our office. By the way, we're in Miami if you didn't know that. Okay, this is our, our Miami office. Okay, the address is 5245 Northwest 36th Street, Suite 200. Come, you know, come walk in the door and see us and we'll, we're here to talk. So look, um, what we do is we basically, we'll play a CBT, but I would say probably after the first five minutes we close that up. 
All right, we put we open the manual, we get the whiteboard out. All right, and we old school this thing. Okay, we just go through the manual, talk to you about scenarios, talk to you about the system, one on one, right? And we minimize the uh, the PowerPoint clicking. Right, we don't want to. We want we want instructor led training and, and less uh, professional PowerPoint clicker. You know what I'm saying? So so that's the thing. So watch, check this out. This is what I meant about earlier, right? I was like, hey man. <laughs> this examiner is going to know if you're going to pass or not, like within the first 15 minutes yeah. or 20 minutes. Okay. And, and a lot of people, you know, a lot of pilots think, you know, well, I don't need to know that. Well, guess what? Yes, you need to know that because when something happens, you know, how are you going to read the QRH? You know, yeah. the more you know about your system and your airplane, the more you understand, you know, what actually you're doing when you're moving a switch. Yeah, yeah. One switch can go into Two more systems, yeah. you know. So that's why you need to know, yeah. you know, your systems. Yeah. So, so, so check this out, right? Um, this is one question. Juan loves this question, by the way. Oh yes. Why do, you, why do you like this question? And I would say maybe, <laughs> you know, I don't want to go. Maybe I know we like here, but yeah, sorry. But I, I would say maybe eighty-five percent, maybe a little higher. But a lot of the pilots or maintenance people, they don't know these things. And we've been flying or we've been working on these airplanes. For years, yeah. we might have thousands of hours, and, and, and the same thing we get them in return. Yeah. Oh, I've never heard that. That's excellent, beautiful, and that's the idea behind you know all these training videos that we're doing for you guys is to help you understand more system that you're not getting actually on your company. You see. So watch. So, so watch this question. Okay, this is a, this is a seven three question here. We got an engine panel behind us, right? With this one question, okay, we're going to look at various areas of the system right now. Okay. What are you checking? In fact, Juan, you take this man. But this is Juan likes this question, so I'm going to give this man. So, so. <laughs> yeah, well, the question will be like Joe was saying, what happened? This is the APU switch, right? APU bleed valve. What happened when you open the APU bleed valve? What happened? You know, let's assume the APU is already running, right? We we'll wait 60 seconds, one minute. Normally, that's what you should be waiting, right? Before you open the APU bleed valve. Now, the question will be, what happened when you open the APU bleed valve? And then, the way we teach you this, and, and I'm going to ask you is, the question will be, what happened when you open the APU bleed valve? How many systems are you checking when you open this APU bleed valve? As soon as I say, how many systems, they say, what do you mean? What do you mean how many systems? It's only one system, just the APU bleed valve. But guess what? No, you're wrong. So how many systems are we checking? when you open the APU bleed valve. So we check in three systems. We check in the operation of the APU bleed valve, you check in the operation of the isolation valve in auto, and you check in the dual bleed light. Now it's a little bit higher here in the top, okay? We're gonna see that in a minute, so here we go. So you see, now you're checking the operation of the dual bleed light. So we check in three systems. So, you're going to check the operation of the APU bleed valve. How do you do that? Well, we're going to go now to the pneumatic duct, uh, uh, the duct uh, pressure gauge, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to look at the needles here. We have the left pneumatic pressure, the left needle for the left side of the pneumatic pressure, and then we have the right needle for the right side of the pneumatic pressure. So, when you open the APU bleed valve, now the other question will be, how many needles are you going to see going up? One or two? A lot of people say, well, Two, they might be guessing. If you said one or if you said two, then I'm going to ask you, why? What's the reason behind this? How, how do you know it's one or two? Well, when you open the APU bleed valve, remember you're pressurizing the left side of the manifold. So the left needle is going to go up. Now you're going to check the operation of what? Of the oscillation valve. Because the oscillation valve in auto remembers normally closed. When does the oscillation valve and then open in auto? When do the oscillation valve open in auto? When any of the four corner switches are in the off position. So as soon as you open the APU bleed valve, you pressurize in the left side of the manifold. So you're going to see the left needle goes up. If the oscillation valve is working properly, the way they should, right? Because we have the pack switches off. That's the normal setup position for bone, right? Pack switches off. Guess what? The oscillation valve is open. 
So now you pressurizing the right side of the manifold and the right needle goes up. You see, so now you're checking two systems, right? The operation of the APU bleeder and the operation of the oscillation valve in auto. If you open the APU bleed and the oscillation is in auto and the packs are off and only the left needle goes up, what is the problem there? The oscillation valve. The auto logic is not working properly. So what do we do? Now manually, you're gonna go to open and if the right needle goes up, now you know that the auto logic of the oscillation valve is not working properly. If it doesn't go up, then the oscillation valve is completely bad, right? And this last system will be the dual bleed line. Now you're checking the operation of the dual bleed line. Because the dual bleed line goes up a little bit here, you see. The dual bleed line monitor, remember, the position of the engine bleed switch and the two valve, the position of the APU bleed valve and the oscillation valve. It's like a triangle here, right? So you see, just by moving one switch, we check three systems. And look what we just explained in maybe, you know, a couple minutes here. And a lot of people say, well, I've never seen it like that. You know, every time I open that APU bleed valve, I just look for the pressure. Yeah, but why are you looking at the pressure gauge? Are you looking for one needle, two needle? Because now what you're checking here is the oscillation valve. And at the same time, you're checking the dual bleed line. See that? By the way, when you answer stuff, you, you've heard me say this before. Okay. You need to treat an oral like a deposition. <laughs> okay. True, yeah. I mean, you know, you're, like you're not here, right? You're not there to, to, yeah. to tell a story, right? right. Yeah. You know, so like if I say how many hydraulic systems do I have? Three. three. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to know about I have an A and B and standby and five pumps and three thousand. Just PSI. answer what they ask you. Yeah, That's yeah. it. Just go to the main point. If they want to know more, believe me, they're yeah, going to yeah. ask you. They're going to try to get more out of you. But if they say, hey, what color is this? Red is red. That's it. Don't say red, and if I move the switch, it's going to open. No, I just ask you what color it is. That's it. Yeah. So look, going back to this, right, we're going to wrap this up. We, we're going to try to keep this to no more than about an hour. So look, um, three keys to type success. I know the first one we kind of went through, so I'm already just recapping it. Don't assume. Remember, do some prep work on your own. Do not show up thinking you're going to learn everything. You're going to be spoon-fed. That's not the case. Okay, That's not the environment. That's not the, that's not the way things are running right now. Okay. So prep yourself, give yourself time to do that. If you're at one job, okay, leave that job with at least a week, maybe two weeks, and two weeks preferably if you can do that in between to give you some time to study. You may not have memory and limitations at that time, okay? Comes next, second point, right? Know what you're studying for. Well, the first thing I'm studying for is an oral. Okay, look at the training plan behind me. Okay, by the way, like I said, download this thing in the store, it's free. Okay, so you know your oral's coming up, you know you got a check right later on, so, Memory items and limitations would be filling my pie chart here. 100% of my time is going to go to that. But look, and maybe you don't have that until day one of class. I get it. All right. So you want to study systems, systems, right? Fault lights, uh, auto logic. Okay, laws if you're in the Airbus. And what is the best way to do that? You know, videos. In our opinion, of course, so you get that optimal knowledge transfer. Yeah, and Joe is going to be talking about so, these, you know some of the videos that we have, you know, to help you guys with the oral. You know, like uh, the pre-roll that we have. You know, we actually ask you know the license switches, so you can actually when you download the video, just pause it, and it's like if we give you an oral, and we're going to cover the whole license switches for the Airbus and the 73 classic is an engine. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so allocate your time. Okay, and this is the second point, right? You need to know what you're studying for. When you get a schedule, okay, you need to take the schedule. Okay, day one, day one of your schedule, you need to put it on the left side. Where's all mine? Here we go. Right, so I got day one here and I got X over here. You need to draw a timeline and put the checking events. You need to put oral, I need to put check ride, so that I now know, okay, how much time am I gonna study over here? How much time am I gonna study over here? So that's what they're gonna use the training plan. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I would use a training planner for it. Now look, the, when you log in and you look at the videos, you notice it's split up in between oral prep and sim prep. If you haven't done an oral yet, all right, or if it's pretty far out in the future, I wouldn't be looking at the sim prep stuff yet, all right, yet. It'll come later on, but kind of just you know, follow the flow. So you, you know how to allocate your time, you use your resources effectively. So because you know what you're studying for, you know what you, know what you need to do in order to, to uh, to make the most out of it, right? And 
okay, the last point here, invest in me and yourself to know, okay, the only way that, the only way that you're going to know is by repetition and actually learning, not just, not just road memorization, right? So look, let's take this call, man. Hey, what's up, man? Joe talking to you. How are you? Joe Munoz. Joe Munoz. Who are we talking with? Who is it? Vino, what's going on? Vino, how are you? Not much, brother. Are you watching us live or are you watching us on 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 Awesome. Hey, listen, you're 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 live on the show, man. You're on you're, you're on speaker right now. Okay, all right. I'll talk to you later. So, what is the question that you have, Vino? Did, did, did you did you have a question for us here? We're we're actually shooting live. No, 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 no. I'm just gonna talk to you later. Right? I'll talk to you later. Oh, okay. all right, cool, man. All right. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. We'll give me a call back. Yeah. Hey, so look, 1-888-778-1441, he's on the show live, and... Um, and if you have any questions, give us a call, you know, if it has to do with, you know, how to train, you know, some training, prepare for your oral, just give us a call. That's what we're here, to help you guys, you know? Um, cool, so, so invest in yourself to know, yeah. to know, to know, not road memorization. The only way you're going to explain an a, 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 uh, AP bleed valve, Right, when we talked about that, right, we're checking the bleed valve that it's opening, we're checking the isolation valve that it's opening because both needles come up. Right. If only one needle comes up, your isolation valve doesn't work. Right. The auto logic doesn't work. Okay, that's why you have these manual positions, right? So now you're going to try to manage. Okay, like Joe's explaining the dual bleed light comes on. If the dual bleed light doesn't come on, the, 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 the logic doesn't work for the dual bleed light. Or so, check the switches, right? You know, or you check the switches. <laughs> check the switches. Maybe the switches yeah. are not in the right position. <laughs> but assuming they are, right? <laughs> then, then they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, so there's a lot of different things you can do. But look, uh, that's kind of what it is in a nutshell. This is the phone number: one eight 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 seven seven eight one four four one. Call anytime. Okay. Sometimes, uh, sometimes. Sometimes I'll pick it up right away. Other times uh, it won't come straight to me, but it can get forwarded to me. I'm going to give you my email if you don't already have it. Okay, it's joe.m at onesteppref.com. All right, and this is Juan over here. Juan.me at onesteppref.com. Shoot us your, your, your emails, your questions. Okay, we're going to answer them all. And, and uh, another good point, we also do it in Spanish, huh? For the Spanish speakers that they're watching, hey, we just do it in English or Spanish. You know, whatever your needs is. Nuestra so. gente hispana que está, como están todos, <laughs> saben que nosotros aquí somos de, de todo lenguaje, hablamos de todo aquí en one step. Hey, aquí nos ayudamos en español o en inglés. So we do both, English or Spanish. That's what we hear. All right, so we want to help you as much as we can. So just give us a call, whatever question you have, any doubt that you have. That's what we're here to help. Yeah. All right. Cool. Like that face says, right. we're here to help. <laughs> we're here to help. We're here to help. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, look, guys, that's it, man. We're gonna wrap this thing up. Try to keep it under an hour, so we're not taking too much. So time. next time, what are we gonna be covering? Maybe we can cover some systems or systems. Let's see. What do you want? Set. What do you want us to cover? Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. Yeah. Give, us a, give us a call. And let us know. Hey, yeah. why yeah. you guys don't talk about this? We need, uh, you know, whatever it is. We just bring the light to you about. guys. All right. So. So. Cool. Good. All right, man. Okay. Awesome, guys. Good. Have See a good you. one. All right. Good. Good.